Easter is just around the corner. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you three sermon illustrations that you can use to help others in your church better understand the amazing truth that is Christ's resurrection. Hey, I'm Nathan, I'm a family pastor and a Christ follower, and this is Productive Pastors, a channel that is dedicated to serving those who serve the church. Tolkien and C.S. Lewis were amazing world builders in the fantasy genre. They told stories that brought readers right into Narnia and into Middle Earth. And in both of these worlds, both Tolkien and Lewis recognized that there was an importance of people longing to be home and for their king to return. In The Lord of the Rings, this comes in the form of the character Aragorn, who leads a band of warriors ultimately going to the gates of Mordor, the gates of evil to fight them. In this process, he's revealed to be the true king of men. And after this great battle, he returns home, restoring Middle-earth to what it used to be before it was corrupted. He returns as a victorious king and is crowned. And in the Chronicles of Narnia, Aslan is a good and righteous king that is slain by the evil witch. All of Narnia yearns for summer and the restoration of good things. And this desire is brought to life when Aslan is resurrected and defeats the evil white witch. In both of these created worlds, a return of the king brought a return to life as it should be. There was a longing for home, an uncorrupted home. And there was a longing for the return of the king. And in between those two things, there was a period of waiting. It isn't hard to see where Tolkien and Lewis drew their inspiration from. The resurrection is the promise that our king will return one day, but also that he is restoring things right now, right here. As we long for our home, Jesus has brought and he is bringing heaven down to earth with us. One day this will come in full when our king returns, but today Jesus is actively restoring those who follow him. Lewis wrote this, I hope no one who reads this book has been quite as miserable as Susan and Lucy were that night. But if you have been, if you've been up all night and cried till you have no more tears left in you, you will know that there comes in the end a sort of quietness. But at last, Lucy noticed two other things. One was that the sky on the east side of the hill was a little less dark than it had been an hour ago. The other was some movement going on in the grass at her feet. I live in Arkansas and I love to hike the trails around me. And at this time of the year, there's a special tree that blooms in this season called the dogwood tree, and it can be found on a lot of these trails. There is a legend, and that's all it is, it's just a legend, but, but there's this legend about the dogwood tree. It goes that the dogwood used to be a much larger and stronger tree, not like the ones you would find on a hike through Arkansas. And when Christ was crucified, it said that the Roman used wood from the dogwood tree to create the cross. Because of that, God cursed the dogwood tree so that it would never be strong enough or large enough to make and create a cross ever again. But God also blessed the dogwood tree by having it bloom every year around Easter. He gave the flowers four petals to resemble the cross, and at the end of each of them were red marks to resemble the, the blood-soaked hands and feet of Jesus. And the center of the flower resembles the thorns that Jesus wore on his head. And this may just be a legend, but if you live in an area where there's a lot of dogwood trees, it's hard not to think about the cross and the resurrection whenever you pass by them. All the way back in Genesis 2, we read about God planting a garden in a place called Eden in the east. And from Eden, a river flows down and out into the garden to then flow into other surrounding lands. Ezekiel, in chapter 28, 
verse 13 describes Eden as a holy mountain of God, which also describes why there would be a river flowing down and out of it to the surrounding lands. And at the center of this garden is a tree, the tree of life. And as humanity, which was Adam and Eve, as they ate from the tree, they gained provision and they gained eternal life. And when it was time for Jesus to go to the cross, he is led out of the city walls to a place called Golgotha, a hill just outside of Jerusalem. He was then nailed to a tree, the cross, in the center of other trees. From this tree, Jesus brought life and provided a way for others. And as humanity followed Jesus, they gained provision and they gained eternal life. Because of Jesus on the cross and because of his resurrection, we are now in part and in one day fully restored to the original relationship with God that we were always intended to have as his creation. Hey, I hope these were helpful to you this Easter season as you are preparing to teach, and I hope that they're helpful for your church as they are celebrating the resurrection. God bless and see you guys. <laughs>